Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low budget wonder. Now check this out. First thing you want to do is well out a couple cups of flour. That'll leave enough room to drop in three eggs. Then you want to drizzle in a little bit of olive oil and a pinch of table salt. Now all you have to do is whisk those eggs together and slowly but surely incorporate that flour from the outside to the middle. Then you can start working on creating your pasta dough. Now it might at times seem a little bit messy, but all you have to do is push the flour more to the middle and start working it with both hands, steadily kneading, until you activate that gluten. And it can take anywhere from five to eight minutes to do this by hand. So if you're feeling lazy, you can throw it in a mixer if you'd like. And if it seems to be a little too dry, you can drizzle a little more oil in there if you'd like. Even a few drops of water wouldn't hurt. But making the dough is the most important part to making good pasta. And the way you know you're done is the dough will fill and look just like brand spanking new Play-Doh. At this point I just press and mold it into a potato shape. Then I come back and cut it into quarters with my knife. Then I save one to start rolling into noodles and then I take the other pieces and I place them into some Tupperware and cover with a lid so they don't dry out. Now today I'm going to be using my pasta maker. All you have to do is dial in your rollers starting with the widest setting. Then you take your dough and smash it with the palm of your hand so it's nice and flat. Then place the dough in between the two rollers and crank it through. Now it's not going to be perfect at this point. So you can see here I've even got a hole in it. But all you have to do is fold it in half and then run it through again. It's really not much more complicated than that. But now we're going to go ahead and change the setting again. And every time we do that, we're going to run the dough through twice. But this next time we're going to change the setting, we're going to do something a little bit different this time. You want to run it mostly all the way through the first time, but you're going to save some of the top to flap over and press the bottom sheet firmly into itself. Then when you crank and turn it together, it will become one unified piece. Once again, running it through twice before we change the setting. Now if you'll notice, I can reach my hand inside the dough while it's turning. This helps me keep the sheet loose so there's no uneven spots throughout the dough. And you're just going to repeat this process until you get all the way down to the last setting. This is going to require just a little bit more finesse because it's so thin. But you already know what to do. Just keep that sheet loose and crank it through twice. And by now you'd be appreciating attaching the two dough ends and running this through the pasta maker repeatedly. These sheets get so long, you'd be holding it up over your head if you didn't. Now I'm just going to cut the sheet where it's starting to tear anyway. Then crank the rest of the dough through. And then spread this whole thing down across the counter. Now all you have to do is cut your lengths. Anywhere from 10 to 12 inches is fine. And this is all you need to make ravioli by the way. Now you want to just throw down a pinch of flour on each sheet and rub it in real good. Now just change our crank from the rollers over to the fettuccine and just stick that sheet through. Sometimes it takes a little tampering. And once you start rolling it through, you can drop your sheet and grab a hold of the noodles before they fall out. And now you've got perfect fettuccine. Well, what about angel hair pasta? It looks good to me.
and there you have it. How to make pasta right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.